I am Andrew Propina Jr. And I'm Shirley Propina. Welcome to Holy Nation Ministry. Virtually, we are Holy Nation Global because from here, we are there. Holy Nation is a family church with a global vision. Our mission is to evangelize the lost, disciple the believer, and empower the disciple. Thank you for visiting. Enjoy your stay. And we are praying that, that we, we see you, you again.
14 through 16, and it says, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light until all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen, amen. As I look at this passage of scripture, it lets me know we have responsibilities. As children of God, we are responsible for revealing the light God has given us. The scripture tells us uh, to let our light shine. But the question is, will we let it shine? Uh -huh. Will we let it shine? Will we permit it to shine so people will be able to see God? And will we say yes to the call of God? That's the question. So how many times have we actually walked by a dark situation without shining our light and said, oh, somebody else will do that. Somebody else will get that. Oh, I've been shining so long until I'm just going to let someone else shine their light. Or I don't feel like even flipping my switch today. I'm going to let someone else shine on today. We must shine because God is not a secret. And listen, we must let the public know. Uh -huh, say it out loud. Say, we're going public. We're going public on today. Uh -huh, God is not a secret, and we're going public. On this morning, I want to talk about, just for a few minutes, I want to talk about a light that works. A light that works. What good is it if you have a light and it's not doing anything but sitting around? What good is it if you have a light and there's no source or there's no power? We know to work anything, it takes faith. And our pastor, I tell you, for all this month has been teaching us the components of faith, been talking about faith. So it takes faith for us to actually work our light. But have you ever really, really, really stopped to think about light? I mean, really. Have you thought about life? What would it be like if we were in total darkness? What would it be like if we didn't have any light? The world would be dark and a cold place. There would be no vegetation. We couldn't walk on the sandy beaches. We couldn't uh, go out and soak up the rays of sunshine. We would be in total darkness. And when we are in total darkness, you know what we do. We look for light, don't we? We look for a light switch, and, and, and we're opening up curtains, and, and we're trying to find a flashlight. We're trying to find a candle. And when, when, when the lights come on, no matter how small it is, we can see it. Uh-huh. You know, even when uh, uh, the lights go off sometimes or during a storm or whatever, I forget that the lights are off and I just walk through the house flipping on, you know, flipping the switch, trying to make it come on because I'm so accustomed to the light. The light. When we start to talk about the light, when the light come on, it helps us. Light helps us to find our way. It helps us to stay on course, and it helps to give us direction and give us foresight. And the bottom line is that it would be hard for us to survive without light. That is why we don't need to be shining all in one place. You know, sometimes a whole lot of light can just blind you, you know. You know, you know, I have some little candles sitting here. Here's some other things. You all know me. I'm a visual aid type person, but have four candles sitting on each stand here. And just sitting here and sitting among all of this light, the camera lights and all of the lights. And Well, you know, it's not doing very much. But if I said, well, I'm going to take one of these candles and give it to Miss Smith. I'm going to take one of these candles and give it to Annette. I'm going to take one of these candles and, and, and uh, what else I'm going to do with it? I'm going to take it over here on this side, amen, and give Deacon Eddie a candle. I'm going to take another candle and give Mother Margaret one, amen. We're just giving out light, amen. God is passing.
passing out light. Ella Bibbs need a light. Amen, amen. Uh, uh, Deacon Washington need a light. Amen, amen. Listen, we need light. And if it's all in one place, it's not serving us any good. But when we go into our different directions, uh, when we go to our many different homes and all other facilities or what have you, that's when uh, it's good to let your light shine because there's darkness all around us uh, out in the world. But it's a lot of light up in here. Uh, it's so much light up in here too. The heat is coming from the light. Uh-huh. So have you ever stumbled your way through a dark room, tripping and bumping into stuff? You know, bumping your toe and your knee and breaking lamps and stuff, falling all over, everything discombobulated. You don't know what to do. The light is extremely useful in a dark place. It lets us see clearly what is around us and it keeps us safe. The Word of God shines light for us. So we don't have to go stumbling through this dark world. In the light of Scripture, we can see what and where sin is. We can see what pleases God and we know how to obey His Word because it will keep us safe. His word will keep us on course. We know that light changes the atmosphere. Oh yeah, the light changes the mood. Light changes temperature. Light is the main source of energy for living organisms. And when, when I get through thinking about all of that, I just simply say, I need light to see where I'm going. How many of you know that you need the light of God so you can see where you're going? And if you know you need the light of God, say, I need the light. I need the light. We need the light of God for peace of mind, for faith, for his blessed assurance, for his promise to us, for his joy. His light reveals light to the spiritual eye so we can see, so we don't have to stumble through life not knowing where we're going or, or why we're going there. God, light, gives us direction and instruction. Proverbs 20 and 24 says a person's steps are directed by the Lord. How then can anyone understand their own ways? Then Psalms 32 and 8 says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Oh, yeah, God's looking out for you. He's watching out for you. He's watching over you. God's eye is upon you. We know that. We know that. So, we know that God has a place, has placed the light in each of us. But what good uh, is a light if it's not working? The sun illuminates the moon. And the Son of God illuminate us so we may shine for God. We have, uh, we may have uh, light fixtures in our home. We might have them in every room. Uh, but I know one thing. If we don't call MLG and W, they're not going to shine. Uh, they're not going to come on. I don't care how much money you spend on the light. I don't care how different and how beautiful they are. I don't care if they're the only ones in the world. They're not going to shine. They need some power. It's the power we need in order to have light. And in order to continue to have the power in our homes, there's something we must do in our natural li life. If we want to have power in our homes, there's something we must do, and it's called work. Uh -huh, yeah, we have to work, and hopefully it's a good work. Hopefully there ain't nothing wrong, y'all out there, in, you know what I'm saying, doing some, something that you don't suppose. But we're doing a good work. Why? So we can pay our bills. Why? Because we want our lights on. Uh huh. Because if we don't, uh huh, we're gonna get a visit. We're gonna be, uh huh. The company gonna visit us, and our power will be disconnected. One thing about us, we don't like to be disconnected from things that we value. That things that, you know, you let your telephone uh, go down. Uh -huh, we'll be running around talking about, you got a charger? You got a charger? Stop by the store and buy me a charger. I lost my charger. I need my computer. I, I need this charger. I need the connection. There are consequences when we can't see and we're in the dark. 
Number one, our food is going bad in our refrigerator. And you know we want to eat, and we paid a lot of money for it. The temperature is not right in the house. Amen. I'm too hot. I'm bothered up in here, and, and, and there's no hot water. What can I do? Amen. My TV is off. I can't see what I need to see. My clothes are dirty. I can't even wash my clothes. I can't invite guests over to my house because it's dark up in here. Uh, are you disconnected to the power? Because if it is, if there's a dog that's going on, we need to be in the light. So in the spirit, you don't want to give an invitation without your lights being on. You're not going to invite somebody over to your house, Sister Margaret, and your lights on. You, you know what? You're trying to get up out of there yourself. You don't want nobody to come over to your house because no one wants to come to a dark house. You can't see and they can't see. The blind leading the blind. You stumbling, they stumbling. You falling, they falling. They hurt, you hurt. The blind leading the blind. You may be able to feel your way around. You know, sometimes we that have been Christians, you know, when we get in a way, you know, just like in your house, if your lights go off, you might can feel your way. You, 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 you know, you might not, not need to see everything because you know where everything is. You know, so, oh, I'm going to take the, oh, I forgot that chair is right here. I placed that chair there so I know it's there. And so, but here's the thing. When somebody else try to find their way around your house, they don't know nothing about your house. They stumbling over your chairs and falling down stairs, bumping their heads into the wall. They bleeding. They need paramedics. They need some things. What are you saying, Shirley? Listen, if you know that, listen, sometimes we invite people. We do things that we know it, it, with a sign out that we are, uh, belong to God. But listen, sometimes we're confusing people because our light is dim and they really, really can't understand what's going on. So it causes people to stumble, stumble at some time. It's just too much darkness going on. Uh, we must have God's light in our building at all times. Don't be telling people to come on over to my place and, and you can't see. You know, it used to be a song out, come on over to my place. Don't be inviting people over and, 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 and they don't know that you can't see. When they saw you, you, your light was shining all around you. You was at church or somewhere with some friends. They saw the light shining around you, but they didn't understand that the light wasn't in you. And there's a difference. Sometimes uh, when we're in the middle of other people, their light is illuminating us. The light is just shining and we're just up in the midst of the bunch. We're just in the crowd. But when somebody gets you one on one, oh my goodness, the darkness show up. And that person like, huh? What's going on? Who? Who is this? Who is really going on? You somebody new. Oh, darkness don't creep on up in here. They didn't know that you were being illuminated by somebody else. They didn't know that your brother was covering you. They didn't know that somebody was just shit. Ah, oh, but the light showed up. And then, and then the people were confused. Uh-huh. So, 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 I know. I know. I know. Uh, uh, you know, when we think about the light, I want to warn you and let you know, some people don't want your lights to be on. They want you to be in the dark. They don't want you to never, ever, ever, never, 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 ever let your lights come back on. Now, I don't want to hurt your feelings, but yes, I must break the news to you that somebody is glad that your power is on. They don't want you to get, no, uh-uh. What's she coming over here for with all that light? Now, I've been over here in the dark. I'm doing just fine. I know how to feel my way around. It's comfortable over here. I'm comfortable. I know she's not coming over here trying to tell me how to come out of the darkness. I want to stay in this dark. And matter of fact, you know it's some darkness in your life somewhere. You just not letting it show. I know Laura didn't bust up in here with that loud voice just talking and bragging on God. I know she did. I know something going on in her life. Oh, she can't be all. Oh, that light can't be that strong. We know that God is with us. 
and we can do all things through Christ that strengtheneth us. Amen. When we get weak, when our light get a little low, we know where to go to charge it up. And that's what happens when the saints come in on bright light. That's what happens when they blow up the light and turn it up on bright. Because God, I say, I feel him in the room. He spoke a word into our lives. He said, you can do it. You say, I don't know if I can do it. God, you can do it. And he keep on giving you that power. He keep on giving you the source that you need. Uh-huh. To move forward. I say, I say, I, I submit to you that we all need to call upon the name of the Lord for power to come into our lives. Power to live right. Power to walk right. Power to talk right. Power to love right. Power, power. Power to be right. Power to forgive what you can't forget. Power to say yes to his will. Power to be content. Power to cast down imaginations. Power to conquer fears. Power to let go. Power to pick up. Power to turn around. Power to stay and power to go. Power. Somebody say power. Uh, can you help me say power? We need power, Lord. Power. Power, Lord. Yeah, oh, Lord. Uh, we need some power. Uh-huh. Uh -huh, power for the race, uh, power for the journey, uh, power, power uh -huh, to make our way out of this situation. It's a dark world out here. You better be trying to grab some power. Hey, oh Lord. Uh -huh. Now what we have to know is uh, that God's power will never, 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 ever, ever, never, ever cut off. It'll never fail. Uh-huh, no storms can break his connection. No down power lines can prevent his power from coming through. I, I know tornado tornadoes and hurricanes and floods and straight line winds have tried to break us down uh, and break our connection. Uh, they have tried to twist and turn you every way and break you down. But God's word says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. That's good news on today. I don't know about any of you, but when the enemy rushes in on me, when the enemy try to take me out, I know without a shadow of a doubt that God is pulling me through and he's gonna bring me out uh-huh pastor talked about faith and that's where your faith reside you got to know that you know you got to know that you know you got to know that he will do just what just what he said uh-huh yes 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 uh-huh yeah yeah when the enemy comes in uh-huh you standing on his word uh-huh allow your light to shine. In other words, push the button. Activate your faith. There's, not, uh, there's nothing that God can't do. And there's something God has called you to do. Uh -huh. And that's yes, yes you. I'm talking to you to do. Amen. But it's up to you to make the decision uh -huh, to flip the switch, to flip the light bulb on, to twist it in the socket. We as carriers of light are responsible for something. Number one, we're responsible to do good works. Uh-huh, tell your neighbor, say you're responsible uh -huh, to do good works uh -huh, as a light carrier. Ephesians 2 and 10 say, for we are his workmanship created in Christ, Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should in them. God already prepared. He's already prepared your way. And all you got to do is walk. Walk 
in them. Uh, uh, God, God has assigned each of us to do what reflects him. God's word says greater works shall you do in my name. Someone is waiting on your greater. I don't know about it, if you know it, but somebody's waiting on your greater. Someone is waiting for you to say yes and for you to move out in faith and for you to accept your God-given assignment to love one another, to help one another, to win souls, to witness, to help the needy, to offer your time, to offer your talents, to encourage someone, but it's up to you to make the decision to do good works, do good works, touch your neighbor and say, do good works now, do good works now, Noah, Noah made the decision to build the ark, Abraham made the decision to leave his comfort zone, the comfort and security of his home uh, and stepped out into the unknown. Uh, Moses made the decision uh, to confront Pharaoh. Uh, the disciples uh, made the decision to walk away from their careers and follow Jesus. Uh, Peter, Peter made the decision to get out of the boat. Uh, and that's all I'm trying to tell you on today. Uh, get out of your boat. You got to stop making excuses and tell God that I'm not going to procrastinate any longer. I'm going to do what you call me to do. And number two, secondly, you must go out of your place of comfort, your place of security, your place of fear. You must be willing to step out, come out, uh-huh, no, it's an edge out here. I don't know if I'm going to get that close. Look like I'm going to get off balance. I'm afraid to get that close to the edge. God won't let you fall. He's there carrying you every step of the way. So that's what we have to do. We have to be willing to get out of our comfort zone uh -huh, and say that, God, I'm going to do it. But we need to move forward in faith. And the peace that we have in that is, the peace is that God will give us light and give us direction in every decision we make. Psalms 119, 105. Say it with me. Say Psalms. 119, 105, the word says, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway, hallelujah, thank you Jesus, and this is the last one and we're going, uh -huh. and it is, we are responsible for not hiding our light. We are responsible for not hiding our light. Now the thing about it, if you have a light, if I had these lights sitting up here and a cloth over it, the light is shining, but don't nobody know what it is. Amen. So you're responsible for your light to shine. Matthew 5 and 15 says, no one after lighting a lamp put it under the bushel basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to the whole house. Uh-huh, if you let your light shine wherever your house is, uh, it'll shine bright. So don't hide your light. Uh, 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 don't have an undercover light. Come on, ooh, my light is secretive, honey. Ooh, honey, it's, I'm undercover. I'm a private investigator. I'm a private detective with my light. My light is covered up. And, I, and don't be undercover, an uh, undercover light. Uh, don't be a peekaboo light. And the, the peekaboo lights, they just uh, are eerie. You just scary. You, you, don't, don't, you don't know you scaring folk. Hey, Amen. You just so deep. Nobody can understand. What is going on? Don't be a peekaboo light. Oh, wow, that word blessed me. I hope it blessed you as well. I want to challenge each and every one of you to give today. You can give uh, on our Cash App, dollar sign, Holy Nation Ministries. You can give on our Giveify app, uh, Holy Nation Ministries, or you can go to our website, Holy Nation Memphis. Dot org. I want to encourage you. I am Pastor Andrew Perpiner, Holy Nation Church of Memphis, letting you know that everything, and I mean everything, is going to be all right.